have actually proved that their businesses have begun to do well. Therefore, the first objective of this training is that we may acquire knowledge for enterprise development. Knowledge that you acquire and apply is what will empower you, uh, you know, for enterprise development. Knowledge that you acquire and you do not apply is not very much helpful because it's not about head knowledge, it's about practical knowledge. So whether you are in the business of trading, um, you know, whether you are in the business of manufacturing, whether you are an artisan, whether you are a trader, whether you are a transporter, or whether you are in the services business, whatever kind of business that you may talk about, the principles are the same and you need knowledge on how you can maximize on business development. It is very, very important that we take note of this first objective. The second objective, of course, is that we need to create employment. When we apply this knowledge carefully, we are going to have a situation where our businesses naturally will begin to grow and it will be natural that you're going to need others to come on board to help you with the running of your business. You begin to bring in people that are knowledgeable in certain areas that you yourself, the owner of the business, may not even have, and they'll help you to grow that particular business. We create employment for ourselves and we create employment for others. Zambia is a very ripe um, environment. The business environment is so good. So Lazy, Northwestern Province in particular, is also a very conducive environment for business. There is no limitation to, to business growth. Not even the sky is the limit. For as long as you have knowledge and you have ideas and you have the, you know, the courage and the boldness for you to start something in this land, in this country, you are likely to 99% succeed in that particular business. You know that there are a lot of gaps in our country and those gaps in business are opportunities and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later so the second objective is to create employment the third objective is to have businesses that are sustainable Kansanshi mining plc always says mining is a wasting asset and therefore they would like the participants of the business development training program to make sure that their businesses are going to be sustained beyond the lifespan of the mine, the sponsoring mine, Kansanshi Mining POC. The lifespan of the mine may be another 30, 40, 50, 60 years, but one day they will wind up because once you dig that copper, it does not grow back. Copper is not like the fish industry. Uh, it is not like um, perhaps the livestock industry where you can continue growing you know, raising animals for a long time within the same space. Mining, when you mine that pit, once you have exhausted it, you can never come back there. You have to go to another pit. That's why they say it is a wasting asset. Agriculture is not a wasting asset. The services industry is not a wasting asset. And therefore, the mine would like us to go into ventures that shall sustain our lives that are going to be sustainable beyond the lifespan of the mine and most probably beyond the lifespan of the entrepreneur themselves. So sustainability is very, very important and it is the third objective. The fourth and last objective is, of course, business formalization because of the advantages of formalization that you are going to gain. You know, um, our government has been um, encouraging formalization of cooperatives, of clubs, of women's groups, of youth groups, of small businesses for the sole purpose of them acquiring empowerment. You cannot be truly empowered if you are not formalized. But when you formalize your business, it becomes easy to be recognized as a legal entity. You have seen that of late. There has been a number of cooperatives that have been given empowerment fund in terms of CDF. 
And uh, there's money up for grabs from the citizens' economic empowerment. Uh, those of you who have been coming to Fortune World and saying we want linkages to financing, uh, we want we want you to 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 help us to access uh, loans and capital. The good news is that you have an advantage. You have been trained. You are being trained. You are trustable. And those of you that are, that have certificates from us and those that are going to get certificates, you can take advantage by attaching them to your loan applications and you will be easier, easily trusted because they know that you have acquired knowledge. One of the prerequisites for you to get CDF is that you should go through training. But I believe that the training that you are getting from, through, uh, from Fortune World with the sponsorship of Kansanshi Mining PLC will still be adequate because you would have learned a lot of, uh, you know, cardinal, cardinal topics that will actually help you to manage your facility very well. So formalization is very important because it will help you to be recognized by government and to be recognized by other legal entities. It will help you to grow your business because you can access some of the facilities in the form of grants, in the form of loans, in the form of business linkages, in the form of tenders, and in the form of contracts and orders. And that is the advantage of actually formalizing your business. <clears throat> so in summary, we are saying that the four main objectives are knowledge, employment creation, business sustainability, and business formalization. Well, dear learners, now the time we have been waiting for has come. And we are now going to kickstart our training program. We believe in, um, in team teaching. So I and my colleague are going to take you through uh, these lessons step by step. Today is going to be a very, very practical lesson as well. Um, and the topic for today is customer relations management. Customer relations management. Now, customer relations management is very similar to public relations management. Others will call it customer care. It is the same principles, but we are going to focus on customer relations management from the business point of view. As per our practice, 30 minutes before the end of the program at 9.30, we are going to open the phone lines. We are going to give you an opportunity to send us a missed call, and then we're going to phone you back so that we can get your questions and comments, and we can share our answers for the benefit of everyone. Follow us on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Fortune World Investments LTD. Tell your colleagues, tell your neighbors, tell your friends that the business development training program sponsored by Kansanshi Mining POC has started. If you're on Facebook, tag your friends. If you have seen our advert, you need to forward it to as many people as possible so that they can access this training program for free. Of course, there's nothing free because somebody there is paying for this program, but the content is very useful to all kinds of businesses that you may think of, and we'll be talking about that very soon. You can also follow us on YouTube. Our YouTube page is Fortune World Consultancy and Training. Fortune World Consultancy, <clears throat> excuse me, and Training. That is our YouTube channel. So let us follow each other very carefully even as we introduce our topic, which is customer relations management. Now, in our introduction, we want to say that before we look at how, as business people, we can take care of our customers, let us go through our understanding of the following. First of all, let us define the word business. What do we understand by the word business? Because I know that we're always using this word business. Well, 
according to the Longman Dictionary of Contemporary English, business can be defined as an activity of buying and selling goods and services. This is what we call commerce. So business involves the activity of buying. You go into the farm areas. You go and buy maize and beans at a wholesale price. You transport them to town and then you sell them at a commercial rate for a profit. That is buying and selling, which we call commerce. And we are always buying and selling. When you go to the market to buy the vegetables from our mothers, the marketeers, those have bought them at wholesale price and they are selling them to us at retail price, making a small profit. And that is what is called buying and selling, which leads to commerce. Another definition of business is the amount of value of trade that is being done. So when you say there is a lot of business in Solwezi, what do you mean? What that means is that you are saying the volumes of trade in business, the volume of trade in Solwezi is quite high. It means that you are looking at the value of trade that is being done in a particular area. We say that Lusaka has a big population and therefore when you open a retail outlet in Lusaka, the amount of value of trade being done is high, higher than Solwezi, higher than Kitwe, higher than dollar. So the amount of value of trade is also called business. I hope, dear learners, you are following me in our introduction because this is very important. The third definition is of business is a particular money-earning activity or a place such as a shop or a factory. So when you say, I have a business or he has a business, sometimes you are talking about the type of activity that that particular business person has. So he has a saloon. He has a barber shop. That is a particular place. It is a particular money earning activity, which you are calling a business. It can be a shop. It can be a factory. It can be a chicken run or pottery house or a piggery or a farm where you're growing vegetables and fruits, or a farm where you're growing grains, that also is a business. Maybe you have three taxis, which are always tripping, you know, as a business activity. That is a money earning activity, and it is called a business. The other definition of business is one's responsibility or concern. So if someone says, mind your own business, what they are simply saying is that mind your own activities and responsibility. Mind your own, you know, concerns. It's none of your business. But for the sake of commerce, we can say that the first three definitions will apply directly to you. But even the fourth definition of one's responsibility or concern will still apply to your business because you are concerned about being responsible for the type of business that you are doing. Oh, the dictionary gives many other definitions that are not required for the purpose of this discussion. But from the above definitions, we can say that we are all in the business of doing something. All of us are in the business of doing something. So the questions that we can ask ourselves, and this is very important for the sake of this lesson, are that, what business are you in? What business are you in? 
Are you doing any type of business? So for you who are following us, I would like you to answer that question to yourself. What business are you doing? Or what business are you in? That is a very important question to ask yourself. Because when you know the kind of business that you are doing, you are going to know the kind of service that you are offering or you're going to offer. And this lesson is going to show you how you can offer the services that you are offering better by applying customer relations management. So that is the first question that you ask yourself. What business am I in? The second question is, who are your customers? Or who are your clients? And then thirdly, what product or service are you offering? What product or products do you offer your customers? How do you offer them those, those, uh, those services? It is very, very important that we ask ourselves these questions. Now, we are still at the introduction stage of our lesson. It is very important that we understand the importance of customer relationship management. Okay? Customer relations management is very important because it will help businesses to gain insight into the needs of their customers and the behavior of their customers so that their customers are saved in such a way that you, as the business service provider, is going to modify their business operations to ensure that customers are saved in the best way possible. I hope you are following me, dear learners. As a business, you need to gain insight or you need to try as much as possible to understand the needs of the customer so that you may modify your behavior or you may modify your operations to ensure that the customer is saved satisfactorily, to be saved in the best way possible. That is the missing link in many, many businesses. And I'll mention a few examples. Out of love, I'll be able to mention a few industries that need to begin to apply good customer care so that they can sustain their businesses and they can have more profitability for a long time to come. So customer relations management talks about the activities, the strategies, and the technologies that businesses use to manage their interactions with customers. I hope you are following me, dear learners. Now, when we talk about technologies, we are not talking about very complicated types of operations because technologies may be simple technology. We'll talk about that in a little while. But for the sake of this lesson, we want to say that customer relations management is important and it will help you with activities, with strategies, and with technologies that your business can apply to manage your interactions and your relationship with your customers. Okay. There is a common saying that a customer is king. Your customer is king. Now, I want to mention a few examples. And as we go on in the lesson, we'll be referring to a few examples of the types of businesses that exist, the sectors in which they operate, and how they can enhance customer care. Many businesses in Solesi, in Zambia, in the world, are in the business of trade. Others are in manufacturing. 
others are in uh, agriculture, others are in transportation of passengers, of goods, we call them courier companies, others are in other services such as fashion, such as financial services, and many other businesses that you can think of. So I'm sure as you are listening to us now, you are able to point out to say, I am in this particular business. Now, let me give one example of a certain business sector that we feel we need to help to enhance their customer relations management systems and also to enhance their growth, sustainability, and profitability. Let's take, for example, the busing industry. Nowadays, a lot of bus companies have transformed themselves in such a way that they even have a courier service that they have attached to their business. So you may be in Lusaka and you are maybe you are in Solwezi, you are a business person, and sometimes you depend on buses to transport your goods from Lusaka to Solwezi. So you buy your products in Lusaka and you ask somebody to go and put them on a certain bus. For example, and I'll mention the buses, you know them. You have United Bus of Zambia, which has come on board. You have Likili. You have Power Tools. You have Jordan and so forth. And somebody buys, you buy your goods in Lusaka and somebody takes them to maybe Likili or Power Tools. Can you please transport these items for me to Solwezi? That person pays the person that is going to put them on the bus, they are issued a receipt. They are promised that they'll be put on the first bus, the one starting off at 05, and it will be in Solwezi by 16.30 hours. And that information is communicated to you. Many are times that the person or the service provider who is in charge of luggage would not put it on the first bus, but in some cases, they will even put it on a different bus, which would delay your goods. And instead of arriving, let's say today on a Wednesday, your goods will arrive on a Thursday. Now, what are the implications? In customer relations management, we are saying, it is necessary that the service provider will gain insight into the needs of that particular customer. What are the needs of that particular business person? Their need in this particular case is that they need to receive those goods on a particular day, probably because they also have a client that they have promised that they are going to deliver those goods to them at a, on a particular day at a particular time. But when the service provider delays for one reason or another, then those goods will be delayed and the service will also be delayed. Are you following me, dear learners? So if you are in the bus service, if you know somebody, you know people that are at Intercity, you know people, that are at the Solwezi main bus station, those who are involved in courier service, tell them to tune in to this program so that they may learn some of the strategies on how customer care can be handled better for the growth and profitability of their businesses. Dear learners, this lesson is very important for all industries. I'm giving an example of the busing industries, the busing industry, but all these other industries are very important. You have seen so many bus companies that have come on board. We had uh, many other bus companies that started. They were the favorites of the people, but today they have disappeared. Why have they disappeared? Well, the main reason is lack of good customer care. 
and their businesses began to go down. Today, they are not there. You used to have bus and companies like Max Motorways. Where are they today? They have disappeared. We used to have buses like Majandu. Where are they today? They have disappeared. We would like to see that the buses that are here today will be there for a very long time to come. They will live and outlive their owners, just like companies like Coca-Cola are still there, Toyota is still there, Ford is still there, and many other companies are still there. I hope you are following, dear learners. So if you are in the business of the busing sector and you have a courier service, make sure that you understand what the client wants, deliver their products in time, secure their products in those goods compartments so that sensitive products are put in such a way that they will reach, you know, the, the, the recipient of those goods in the same form that they were collected, that is excellent customer relations management. Okay. The other thing to note is that the way you answer the, the questions that we ask ourselves, what business are you in, who are your customers, and what products are you offering, the way you answer those questions will also determine the level of your performance. because. In customer care, you may be productive or unproductive, depending on what I've talked about. You may be effective or inefficient or ineffective. You may be customer focused or customer unfocused. That bus company, are you focused on the customer or are you focused on making profit? That saloon, is it focused on the customer? That barbershop? Are you customer focused or are you profit focused? We need to ask these questions. Why did you start your business? If you started your business to make money, you will not be customer focused. But if you started your business so that you can offer a good service, you will be customer focused. That was quite a long introduction, but I hope that we are now on the same page. And as we go on in the discussion, we are now going to understand the importance of customer relations management and how we can improve it in our businesses. Let us now go to the next segment where our my colleague is going to take us through. Thank you so much for that breakdown. Uh, my colleague has actually said much of what we are discussing today in his introduction. Now, let's go to the second segment where now we are looking at the roles of the entrepreneur. Who is the entrepreneur? The entrepreneur is one who conceives or who comes up with an idea, who Im imagines, he comes up with a focus, a vision of doing business. And then he should be able to implement those ideas. So that is an entrepreneur. He comes out with a vision. He says, okay, what I want is a business of this form. My business should be like this. He doesn't end up there. He should be able to come up with ideas on how he is going to implement that particular business. So I have in mind my a business person out there who says, me, I'll be dealing in vegetables. You have come up with your, your vision. You are seeing yourself as a major, you know, business person who is actually making available all sorts of uh, vegetables on the market. 
that is your vision. Now, it should not end up with just a vision. You should be able to implement that. Then you are going to come up with steps on how you are going to implement that particular business. So that is who an entrepreneur is, his role. He also or she is proactive in style, rejects passivity, uh, and exercises control. So we are looking at you as an entrepreneur who has come up with a vision. This is what I want to do. You will make sure as an entrepreneur that nothing comes in between your objective and you know yourself as you are doing that particular uh, business nothing should come in in between to disturb you you will exercise a lot of control in order to achieve your objective so that is the role of the entrepreneur you come up with an idea, implement that idea, and make sure that you exercise control in order to ensure that that idea is implemented to the full. Okay? I hope we are following. So, an entrepreneur actually takes advantage of opportunities in the environment. You as an entrepreneur, you will take advantage of opportunities in the environment. What do I mean there? Here is a situation. My colleague here was talking about busing business. All right. The entrepreneurs, those bus owners they took advantage of situations in the environment they found out that if i mean most customers had problems in transporting their goods because those buses were not allowing goods to be you know uh, carried inside the bus because that was not allowed by law because those goods are actually not secure. They could easily fall on, 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 on the passengers. So what did they do? They made sure that they took advantage of that and added a small carrier behind. That is taking care of what is happening in the environment. Then you have that small carrier behind there where you load all the luggage the passengers are free they are seated free in there and comfortable your goods are also comfortably packed in that particular small carriage so that is one way of taking advantage of situations in an environment there are so many, actually, that we can come up with. You may have a situation where the rain season has come. You, as an entrepreneur, should be able to look around. What is it that the customers or the people, the public around, are facing, the problems that they are facing? which I can easily address. The, 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 I mean, the, the public is having problems because they are getting soaked from their place to their workplaces. What is it that you are going to do as an entrepreneur to alleviate that suffering? And in the process, make money out of that. So this is how an entrepreneur thinks. He takes advantage of 
what is happening in the environment. I hope we have delivered there to actually explain what the role of an entrepreneur is. The role of entrepreneur going back again is that he comes up with an idea and he makes sure that that idea is actualized. Then he also takes care or takes advantage of prevailing situations in the environment. Okay. We go to the third uh, segment, which is now the features of entrepreneurial organization. What are the features of entrepreneurial organization? We have said that the entrepreneur is the one who comes up with an idea and he belabors to make sure that that particular idea is fulfilled or it is implemented. So now, the features now are as follows. Entrepreneurial organizations are involved in decision making. There are decision-making centers actually on the entrepreneur, leading to lack of delegation. Now, the entrepreneur is the vision carrier. So the decision-making is actually centered on him. It's him who makes decisions. He does not delegate the... Uh, the, 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 the the decision making to another person. The other person cannot do it because he is not a vision carrier. It's not his vision. So the vision is for the entrepreneur and he's the one who makes decision. This leads to lack of delegation. So, second, decision making is impulsive. It is sudden and it's without thinking about the possible consequences of the decision that is being made. An entrepreneur will actually make his decisions impulsively. You know, it's so sudden because he's the one who has the vision. So you just wake up in the morning, says, we are going to do this. And that will have to be done. Without even thinking of possible consequences to say, well, this decision that I have uh, taken, will it backfire on me? Usually they don't think that way because they are focused on their vision. Their vision is to make, for example, profit to grow the business. So whatever thinking, whatever decision that this entrepreneur makes, it actually leads to, it's targeted to making sure that that business is a success. It grows and it makes money. So that's why we are saying their decision-making is usually impulsive and they do not think on the negative side of what would happen because of that decision that they have made. They are always thinking in the positive, leading to the success of that particular business. The third point, there are successive changes in strategy that much we know that things happen. What is in today may tomorrow not be there. Okay? Whatever we are, whatever situations, maybe situations do not, uh, are not the same. 
whatever is there today may not be there tomorrow. Whatever is, is going to be there tomorrow is not there today. So there are success, successive changes in strategy. Today, his strategy may be that uh, we start maybe our work at zero five hours. That is what he has strategized. But tomorrow he may change to say, okay, we started zero six or zero seven. That is just an example of what strategy one takes. The strategy which he takes today that he is going to apply tomorrow. The fourth uh, point is he or she finds it difficult to divorce himself or herself from day-to-day -day running of the organization. We are looking at an entrepreneur. An entrepreneur is a vision carrier. He is the owner of that vision. As a result, he finds it very difficult to divorce himself from the running or the day-to-day -day running of the organization. Because according to him, he is the one who has the vision. He is the one who knows how his particular business should run. So he has a track on how this particular business should run. So you would find that he will find it very difficult to delegate certain issues to others or to divorce himself from the day-to-day -day running of that organization because he fears that whoever he lives there may not be able to address situations in that particular organization according to the way he had planned it. So it becomes very difficult for our colleague, who is the entrepreneur, to divorce himself from the day-to-day -day running of that organization. Okay? I have in mind the entrepreneur who is running, you know, a, a grocery shop. There. You will find that he will make sure that every day of the operations of that particular business, he is there. Make sure that that particular and he, he doesn't want anything to divert. So he wants to follow it to the, the features of an entrepreneur together. Then, priorities are focused in the disproportionate important matters. Okay, that this entrepreneur will spend time on certain, you know, activities. That may not, he and he has to do it. So you'll find him spending much time, okay? Because heading to to 
activities equally. Not exist. We have what we call SOAP existence. They do not have such standard, you know, operating procedure. Instead of starting, that is our standard, right? Them do not have this. They may start with B. Start with B, I'll be able to. So you'll find it in an entrepreneur. He will not follow and there are no standard operations. Responsibilities are blood and subjective. According to whatever is happening in the situation, in, in an area there, the entrepreneur will act to just go for that instead of following if there is any lay down procedure. Okay. The situation of an entrepreneurial organization is ambiguous and usually stressful on how you treat your your customers. Because of what we have mentioned above there, time to treat your customers in a proper way. So entrepreneurs exist both, although entrepreneurs exist both in corporate structures and in small business. All that they do as entrepreneurs is aim at success of the business. So the entrepreneur's main focus comes at success, the customer. What they are interested in is to make sure that that customer, when he comes in, they get his money and the business goes forward. They are not, not looking at the interest of this customer. Is this customer happy with what I'm doing? As I get his money of your mind, as an in the success of your business or making profits. No. You also look at your customer and strive satisfied ensure that there is customer satisfaction in corporate enterprises systems are more structured right in a corporate structure you have actually SOPs, standard operating procedures and each and every sector of that regulations on how things are done as opposed to an enterprise 
the new. An example of the public sector, you will have financial regulations. How they deal with their finances in that have also the human resource policy when they are dealing with human human resource. That is a corporate enterprise. They have also general guidelines which are given on how they will conduct their business. This is you as an entrepreneur, an entrepreneur How do you see yourself now where you are seated there? In the light, the entrepreneur who does not have, have these clear guidelines, him is impulsive. Whatever he does is impulsive. He doesn't even consult. There is no laid down plan on how the other sector we have in the enterprise you have well defined you know roles on how to perform duties for example we have given the financial regulations and the general guidelines of doing business in that particular area now you as an entrepreneur where do you fall in these two categories of business people where are we as us business persons where we are how you position yourself in relation to the above will have a bearing on your customer relations management so how you position yourself either at enterprise newer or at corporate impact on how you deal with your customer relations management. It will have an impact on how you are going to deal with your customers, how you view your customers. So that is, we will look at entrepreneur organization, the features. I hope we are done with that segment. Sir, over to you. Thank you very much. Now, my colleague has labored to give you a lot of information on this sub-segment of features of entrepreneurial organization. To summarize that segment, my colleague is showing you that every organization, whether it is a small organization, formal or informal, whether it is a large organization, whether you are talking about a big shop or a cantemba, whether you are talking about a big manufacturing plant, or you are talking about a saloon or a barber shop, you are talking about maybe a bus company, all these organizations have got some features of entrepreneurial organization and how you structure yourselves has a bearing on your customer relations management now this leads us to the next sub, -sub segment where we are now going to look at customer care Remember, we are looking at customer relations management. Now, let us look at the actual you know, practice of caring for the customer. Now, a customer is a person or an organization, a shop, from a particular that is a customer and 
the word customer can be interpreted differently depending on the particular sector that we are talking about. For example, let's look at the usage of customer. People that go shopping, those who go to ShopRite, those who go to pick and pay, to choppies, those who go to the milling companies to buy milli meal, flour, whatever, those who go to buy goods from wholesale shops, hardware shops, those can simply be called shoppers. They are shoppers. They are pushing trolleys in that shop, macro. They are shoppers, but they are still customers because they are buying your goods and your services from your wholesale shop, from your supermarket, from your hardware shop. They are buying them from your stand if you're a marketeer. They are buying them from whatever form of business that you have. These are shoppers because they have gone shopping, but the shoppers are your customers. Let's bear in mind the usage of these words. Second example is people buying things from a particular shop. Those who buy things from that particular shop always. In other words, we are talking about repeat customers. Those are called customers. So the shop owner is going to say, that's my customer because that is the person or that is the company or that is another business that always buys products from them. So they are called your customers. And you know, the customers that frequent your shop, they come to buy goods of small value. They come and buy things for five kwacha, for 10 kwacha. They buy things for 20 kwacha, 50 kwacha, 100 kwacha. Those are very important as well because they are the majority. The majority of the population will go to buy goods from the market in small bits, in small quantities. But, dear learners, did you know that it is the five quarters, the two quarters, when you collect them together, did you know that those are what brings in thousands? Did we know that those are the ones that will bring in millions? Depending on the volumes that are coming in. Go to any successful big business. Go and find out from uh, the Indian shops. I like the Indians because they are very good business people. They are very good traders. They understand business in and out. Go to one of the Indian shops in the town that you are living in. You are going to find out that in those shops, they are going to have goods which are worth maybe 50,000 kwacha per, per product and goods which are worth 15 kwacha in the same shop. Now, they will tell you the secret. They will tell you that very, very small items. Those are the money spinners. Why? Because the majority of the people will buy them in bulk. So when you put together the volumes of many people, they are making thousands and others are making millions. So the people who are coming to bring you the 15 where the 5 kwacha, the 10 kwacha, in your shop and they are repeat customers, those are called customers. And they are very, very important. Yes, customers who will come to buy goods with a TV with 35,000 kwacha, very important as well. 
But did you know that no one will come to buy a TV every week from you? Because a TV takes time before you replace it. A car takes time before you replace it. But a car is, will make a lot of money. And so if I go to buy my spares from Shiloh, Israel Shiloh, on a regular basis, the little, little parts are the ones that will make the business to grow. And that business will call me their customer because I always go there. Let's look at another dimension of customer. When you are paying for professional services or you are getting professional help from, let's say, a lawyer, you've got something that you want a lawyer to represent you for, or maybe you go to a bank or to a social worker, those professionals will call you a client. So the lawyer will say, my client would like to apply for this and that. Your, your banker will say, my client would like to get an overdraft facility, or they want a loan, or they want to get a facility for order financing. That is a client. A client is still a customer for that particular organization. It is only the difference in the usage of language depending on the profession. I hope we are following each other, dear learners. Let's look at another dimension. You go to a medical facility, you are feeling unwell, and you see a doctor. That doctor is going to call you a patient. But who is a patient? A patient is the customer to that hospital or to that clinic. Why? Because you are paying for medical facilities. Ladies and gentlemen, dear learners, even hospitals are in business, especially the private hospitals. You go because you are sick. They diagnose you. They say you have malaria. You are treated by being given an injection and some pills. You take them and over a number of days you are well. You were a patient, but you are a customer of that particular facility. Let's also look at another example. When you go and book in at a lodge or at a hotel, they will call you a guest. Now, who is a guest? A guest is simply a customer of that lodge because that customer is paying for the service of having a room. And they may also give you food and so forth. And there may be other facilities at some lodges and guest houses where you can access the gym. Okay, you can also have uh, maybe transport, transportation to take you to the airport or to pick you from the airport to the lodge. Those are some of the extra services. They will, they will give you Wi-Fi access in your rooms and so forth. But you are staying at that lodge or hotel and you are called a guest. You are staying at a guest house, they'll call you a guest. But who is a guest? A guest is a customer of that particular facility. So dear learners, the customer is actually the person or that organization buying goods and services, whether it is at the shop, whether it is, you know, at the bank, at a legal firm, whether it is at a hospital, or whether it is at a lodge or a guest house, all these are customers, but they are defined differently 
according to the kind of industry. Let me even stretch it a bit more. Even a church is an organization. And the members of that church are called members, isn't it? They are called members. Yes. But those are customers. If you look at it from a business sense, they are customers because they come to that particular church only. So those are your faithful members. They are your faithful customers. And therefore, even a church has customers. Repeat customers. They are coming to access spiritual blessings, services. And they also appreciate by giving to God in terms of the monetary aspect in the offerings. That is a customer. That is a customer. Even students, you apply for a university space. You are, you know, recruited at University of Lusaka, Unilas, and you are studying business management. You are a customer of that particular school. Whether it is a secondary school, a primary school, you are a customer. That is why we say a customer is king. And it becomes unfortunate if the business owner does not treat the customer as king. You exist because of the customer. Without the customer, you will not have that particular organization or that particular business. A customer is very important, whether it is to a school. That is why school owners, let me also speak to school owners. We want your businesses to be very successful, very, very successful. If you are in case you are listening to me, you are listening to us, you own a school or you work for a school, please tell the school administrators to involve very good customer care. The child in school is your customer. The way you treat your customer, the child, because the child is sent to school by the parent, the founder, the way you treat them will determine whether you are giving good customer care or you are not customer focused. So we need to understand the position of the customer. The customer is the king, and therefore, let us be mindful of how we are going to handle these customers. So, we are looking at customer care. So, whatever term we have used, he or she is your customer. As we said, it is one who buys your goods, one who buys your services. And the word buy may be used in the sense of both meaning the use of money where you go and you produce money and you get the goods or the services or simply acceptance of your information or your service where we say he has bought into the idea. You go and sell your idea and that person says we are going to run with you, we are going to support you. The word buying can also mean that. So your customer is one who buys your goods and your services, you know, regardless of the terms that we have used, whether they are clients, uh, whether they are patients, whether they are pupils, whether they are students, whether they are church members, that is your customer. And it is very important that we actually treat them in a certain way. So let's look at the next segment Thank where my you. colleague will take you through now. Well, now we have known what a customer is. Now, let's look at the importance of this person we are calling a customer. 
without the customer, there will be no transactions taking place. Because for you to be in, in business, you need someone to come and buy your goods. Now, if this someone who is supposed to buy your goods is not there, then there won't be any transactions. No transactions. So quiet. There are no sales of goods or services. If, for example, you are a carpenter or you are a builder, you have no one coming to you to ask you to build them a house. Then you are not in business because there won't be any transactions. There are no works. So, because you have no customer, there is no delivery of goods. Goods are delivered from point A to point B because they are customers who want those goods. It's only when you have people who want certain goods that you are going to buy those goods and bring them to their community for sale. So if there are no people who want those goods, you will not bring them. So there won't be any delivery of these goods. Where there is no customer, money is not there to exchange hands because people are not buying. So there is no that exchange of money, you know, with goods. So that uh, activity will not happen. As a result, we would simply say there is no commerce or trade. And this, when this one is not there, we will not have even government offices, no NGOs, no private institutions, because all these exist because there is that customer who visits them. Government is there, government offices are there because there are people who will go to them to seek advice. They are going to go to them to seek services. But now when these people are not going there, then you don't have these offices because they will be irrelevant. Why should they be there? So, is there anyone in our midst here where we are seated there in that group is there anyone who is not important for your business? If you will be able to answer that question, I will be very glad. Do we have anyone that we know who is not important in our business? Answer that question, then we are together. Wonderful. I believe that obviously your answer should be that every customer is very important. Indeed. Everyone. Mm -hmm. That's why we say the customer is king. Yes. So dear learners, we are bringing these teachings so that it may help us to, to change the way we look at customers. Um, because many a times that we may be tempted to look at customers as if they are an inconvenience to us. And uh, that's why we're going to now look at treatment of the customer. The first thing that we need to understand is that the person's appearance should not be used as the measure of their importance. There is always an example that we give, uh, and I'll mention there was a certain farmer who went at a certain car dealership. He wanted to buy a vehicle. 
Now you know when you go to uh, a car dealership, they have uh, most of them have an open kind of environment where they have desks seated all over, and you can see the manager there, you can see the salespersons there within the same rooms, and they've just put some demarcations there. So this man walked into this facility and uh, the salesperson was busy attending to somebody that came in and was wearing a suit and tie, looking very smart, smelling good. This person was being taken around and, uh, you know, he asks, how much is this vehicle? And they explain to him how it works. Okay, can you go for a test drive? Because he looked very expensive. And the other man was just in his uh, overalls, okay, looking a bit shabby and dirty, and no one was attending to him. So when they finished attending to the smart gentleman, he didn't buy the vehicle. He said, okay, I'll come back to you later. I need to go. I need to get to my employers, apply for uh, motor vehicle financing. I'll get back to you. Then when that man left, then they started now attending to the man who was looking shabby. His turnout was not very attractive. And he says, how much is this vehicle? And the attitude of the salesman was that uh, he looked at him and he said in a very disinterested tone, sir, that vehicle you're pointing at is very expensive. That's the latest Toyota Hilux. And he says, how much is it? Reluctantly, he told him this vehicle costs 1.2 million kwacha. And he says, I want to buy it. And all of a sudden, he realizes, what? I'm dealing with someone with money. I want to buy it and I'll pay cash now. Reached into his bag, took out the money, put it on the table, and told him, I want to sign my papers, give me my car, and I drive out. What is the moral of the story? Sometimes some people are so down to earth, they are so hardworking, and they have, you know, hands-on on their businesses, because that man was a farmer, he owned a lot of cattle, and for him, if you tell him 1.5 million or 1.2 million, he would just say, okay, how many cows do I need to sell to buy this vehicle? It's very easy for them. The salesman repented and he learned that the person's turnout is no measure of their importance. You cannot judge a book by its cover. Don't judge a book by its cover. Some, cup, some books have nice covers, but their stories inside are very shallow. But some books may not even have a cover, but the content is very rich. So what do we need to do? Pay attention to every individual, regardless what they look like. The individual may not buy today, but pay attention to them because they may come tomorrow and buy the goods that, that they want. And they may also, you know, make a reference to your business if you receive them well. We need, as business people, whether we are shop owners, we are in trade, we are farm owners and people come to our farms, we are manufacturers, we are wholesalers, we are transporters, the transporters, those who are transporting passengers. Maintain polite address to your customers. The customer complains and says, but driver, you are speeding. Don't begin to speak to them in a disrespectful manner. Just slow down and apologize because they are the ones who are making the vehicle to move. That fuel is because they, are, they bought a ticket. That vehicle is being maintained because somebody is buying a ticket. Maintain polite address and response. Whether you are in the services business, 
Let me speak to financial institutions. It can be the banks. Maintain polite address. Then you also need to welcome your customers with a cheerful attitude. Cheerfulness is very, very important because the way you welcome a customer creates a certain environment and a certain image is portrayed about your institution. If you have workers, train them on the importance of customer care. Now, this cuts across all the sectors of business. It also cuts across all the public sector. Your clients are very, very important. In fact, we must thrive as business owners and service providers to make life easy for the customer. We should not, you know, feel important when there are long queues in your shop. When there are long queues in your financial institution, that should not make us feel proud as if we are working. We must try to save people speedily and accurately. From queries that we are going to give a solution to the customer and the customer should go back very happy. They should feel very happy because of, you know, how you have attended to them. Dear learners, I hope we are following each other. Customer treatment is very, very important. Let us treat our customers as kings. The customer is always right. And I know you may be asking a lot of questions to say, what if this customer is rude? The answer is the customer in his rudeness is always right because in that rudeness, you can get one or two components which will make you to serve them well and will make your business to grow. It will boost your business. Dear learners, the time is 9.29. In a few minutes, we will open the phone lines. But let us, first of all, go to the next segment quickly that my colleague is going to take us through. Thank you so much. Uh, we have known who a customer is. And we have also looked at the importance of a customer and how well we should treat our customers because after all they are the kings they are the ones which are making our business grow they are the ones who are bringing in money and in the earlier segment we mentioned that where you do not have customers then there won't be any transaction and there is no business where there is no customer. So let's look at how now we can welcome and help our customers as they come in our premises. When they come in, ensure that you cheerfully greet your customers. Cheerfully. I have deliberately added that word cheerfully. You know, sometimes a greeting, you greet someone with a groomy face, looking very angry, that customer is not going to feel welcome. So you must cheerfully greet them as they come in. Offer them a seat where appropriate because in certain situations you may not have seats. Like someone comes in a grocery store, you don't need them to sit. 
because they have to go around picking whatever they want to buy. But cheerfully talk to them, greet them. Ask how you may help. Ask them how you may help. What is it that they want? How can you help them? In a cheerful manner. Save and give information promptly. You have asked them what they want. They will tell you, we want ABC. Make sure that you save them promptly, quickly. Do not let them, you know, spend unnecessarily a lot of time in your property. No. They have come in, quickly save them and let them go because they may have other things to do where they are coming from. If giving information, which is very important, make sure that you give information. That's why in some earlier topics, we mentioned that you as the business owner, you must know and understand the goods that you have. Know them very well. That when you are asked a question, you should be able to explain sincerely and honestly. We always refer to our, our friends, the Indians, who are quite honest, actually. They will tell you to say this particular part that you want to buy is a gonger or is it, it's not very strong. No, they will put it in a nice way. This one is not a very strong item. But this one is an original. They have sincerely told you there they do not want to mislead you. They have told you so that when you opt to buy the one that is not very, very strong, if anything happens there, you should not blame the one who sold it to you because they told you that this is not very strong. It is a take me home, like those tires you find on, on vehicles. There is a take me home. You are just temporarily it should drive you up to home. Then you put, you change the tire and have the better one there. If it's a guest, help them with their luggage. You know, carry their luggage for them and perform the details, details entries swiftly, quickly, and help the guests how to make entries. If they are not able to, you can even write for them. Then quickly direct them to their room. If it's a guest house or if it's a hotel, okay? Deal with any queries prompting. You know, they are in there. They may come and tell you, you no, know, they complain to you that there is this and that. You should make sure that you address those queries promptly. Where deficiency cannot be sorted out quickly, apologize and assure of earliest attention to the matter. You may also provide alternatives. If selling to a customer, give necessary information to help with choice, selection of items, and maintain integrity at all times. Maintain integrity at all times. Before we begin, I'm sure we can open the lines now. Thank you so much. Well, dear learners, 
I'm sure we have been uh, quite impacted with these lessons on how we are going to, you know, welcome our customers, regardless of the business sector that we belong to, whether it is on the bus, whether you are carrying their courier services, whatever it is that we do, let us learn how to welcome customers. Our lines are open. The number to dial is 0978-383-141. 0978-383-141. Send us a missed call and we are going to call you so that we can get your question. There is a question that came from Mr. Kamau. He sent a message and he says, there is a notion to say, never involve your relatives in your business or in your entrepreneurship as they may take your business for granted. How true is it? Very interesting question, sir, from uh, Mr. Kamau. Yes, sir. Mm. The notion yes. is that never involve your relatives in your business or entrepreneurship as they may take your business for granted. How true is it? Maybe you can tackle that one from a customer relations point of view. Point of view, yeah. yes. Um, Mr. Kamau, thank you so much for that question. Yes, that notion is there and has been there. But that, I would put it that that is not true. Then, when I go back to the previous topics, we mentioned that when, I mean, you can't do it all alone. You will eventually need somebody to help you. Involve, for example, your spouse, your children, your nephews, and all those. They should know what you are doing. They should actually know what you are doing so that at the time when you are down, these people should be able to help out. Now, before you do that, you should look at the persons that you want to involve. Are they people who are sharing in your vision? They should be people who should show that they share in your vision, right? So when they share that vision, they will not take away your, uh, or uh, mislead you in your business, no. Or even steal your proceeds, no, they won't. Because they share in the vision. And their objective will be the same as your objective. To say, well, we want to grow our business this way. So you choose which people should be with you there should be helping you. It's not everyone, this person. Others are not cut out for that. Okay, I hope I have answered you. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much for that. There is another comment that I want to read, um, which says universities and some colleges affiliated to them take long, one to two years issuing certificates okay, to their students who were given a transcript disadvantaging them to apply for employment. Employers do not consider transcripts aspect of customer relations management. In other words, this client is saying universities and colleges should be efficient. They should be customer centered because that particular student who has graduated needs to go into perhaps, you know, and uh, search for employment and they need certification. So we are 
requesting, we are urging learning institutions to be more efficient in the issuance of certificates. That is a very, very valid point mm -hmm. as well. The number to dial is 0978-383-141. Send us a missed call and we are going to endeavor to call you back and answer the question. As we wait for the call, let us... Uh, we welcome our customer. We greeted them cheerfully. And we made sure that we offered them seats. We asked what they wanted. And we made sure that we saved them promptly and gave the necessary information. Now, it is time for our customer or our guest to leave. What is it that we can do? We should thank that customer for having come and for doing business with you. Let's thank them. You wish them a good journey if they are traveling and help with whatever luggage that they have or parcels, where applicable that is. If it's possible, you can help them. If you have someone there, so that you don't leave your business unattended to, let some of Katundu. Then we most importantly, call them, invite them to call back. Again. We have a caller. You. Your name and where you're calling us from? Reverend Kamocha. Okay. Welcome to the program. Thank you very much. I just want to appreciate the working world and can thank you in particular. Thank you. To bring us the, the classes at our home. Sure. So that we may have knowledge to do this. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for calling in. Thank you and continue listening, sir. Thank you. God bless. Bye bye. Okay, so the number to dial is 0978 383 141. That was Reverend Kamocha. He's uh, definitely a shepherd of uh, a church. And he's also just saying he appreciates this program sponsored by Kansanshi Mining POC. Please call in. We still have a few minutes. 0978-383-141. Please may continue as we wait for you. Thank you. So, we were feeling farewell to our customer. We okay. thank our customer. Okay. okay, there is a caller. Now they are not, they seem to be calling instead of um, <laughs> giving us a instead of call. giving us the missed call. But we are going to phone back and uh, just also get their question. Okay, Madam Sungwe. Yes, me, my only concern and question is that uh, what do you do like if you go to maybe a restaurant and then you want to order food and then the waiter begins to give you like that portion they want to serve you are just there standing and then you're just watching them. They are busy doing whatever they are doing. And then they are just out of money. You say, they are wasting my time, then you leave. I don't know what advice can you give to them because it's a place where but you go and buy, you want to buy, it, and then they, it's like they don't want to save you. I don't know what you can do about it. Okay. 
Thank you so much, ma'am, for that valid question. Right. We are going to endeavor to answer it. Well, that was Madam Hilda Sungwe uh, calling from uh, Magrade Extension. You go into a restaurant and uh, the waiter or waitress is taking long to serve you. Maybe they are just chatting with their friends. Maybe she's on phone. And then you get frustrated and you walk out. What advice can we give to such people? I'm going to endeavor to answer that. Okay, you know, after that. First and foremost, business owners must ensure that their values are also implanted or transferred to their workers. Because workers are very, very important. They are the ones who are in touch with customers. You may not be there all the time as the business owner, but your workers are the first point of contact with your customers. Workers can make the business or break the business. My advice to restaurant owners is that they must employ excellent customer service. First of all, when a customer comes in, welcome them cheerfully, ask them to sit down, quickly bring the menu, ask what they would like to eat, ask what they would like to drink. I know the waiter and the chef may be different, but train the waiter in such a way that they'll be efficient and also train, you also need to train the chefs in such a way that they'll also be very, very efficient so that when an order is placed, the food, there are some restaurants where you go and you order food. When you ask them what, how long it's going to take for that food to come, they may tell you it's going to be ready in 10 minutes, in 15 minutes, in 30 minutes, depending on the complexity of the food you have ordered. And for sure, in 30 minutes, the food is brought. It is nice and warm. It's nice and hot. It's delicious, nicely cooked. And the customer begins to eat. So, restaurant owners are very important. Workers in the restaurant are key. They are very, very important. It is therefore necessary that the waiters, the waitresses, who are the first point of contact with customers, employ very good customer care. My advice to restaurant owners is that you need to have your workers trained. You can privately call upon us to give you some more insights, more detail that is industry specific. It's not only to restaurant owners. It may be shop owners who have workers or a worker. It may be a services industry, any business, whether big or small, we need to employ good customer care. That is what is going to bring repeat customers. And that is what is going to make our businesses to grow and our reputation will be so good because we are going to be um, a people, you know, that are always going to attract more and more customers. Thank you. Maybe you can add on top of that. Well... Uh, my colleague has actually said it all. Uh, Mama Hilda there, indeed, the advice that we are giving to those um, restaurant owners is that they should sharpen their skills on customer care because it is very important that the customer should be satisfied. They do not attend to you. This is the topic for today. We are saying customers must be attended to promptly. 
and we should do have actually a way of discussing or talking to customers it should be cheerful polite those are the two issues i wanted to add on thank you so much there is another question from my friend mr alex Injinia. thank you for following he says alex Injinia and the group yes. are asking these questions some business people in their shops are forcing customers to speak kika on them because we are in Solwezi. How do we help such people? Wow. First of all, let me answer that question by saying language is just for the purpose of communication. If we are truly the new copper belt, and if we are truly becoming a cosmopolitan center, which is attracting people from all over the world, then we must get out from that shell of protecting Solwezi as a Kaonde speaking territory, but we must embrace others and mingle with them. And if you are doing business and you are forcing customers to speak on them. When they don't understand Kika Onde, they will walk out and you will lose, you know, you will lose out on business because they have taken money to another shop where they are well out because they're speaking Yanja, they're speaking Tonga, they're speaking English, they're speaking Bemba. In business, tribe, is not really a factor. Language is for communication. Let us learn to embrace others. We are not saying that we should not be proud of our languages. Everyone has a language. Everyone has a tribe. Whether it's, whether it's lossy, that is just God's wisdom of variety. Let's embrace each other. Let us be welcoming to everyone. Let's not be tribal. Tribalism does not help in development. It does not help in business. In addition to that, my you. Wow. I think Mr. Shinji Kenya all has been said. Indeed, as a business person, you should actually strive to know as many languages as you can. Hmm. If you can't speak, but understand. You should be able, like here where we are, you should be able to understand some bit of Nyanja, some bit of Lozi, some bit of, you know, just some bit of that. We are not saying you become a linguist because that will take you time. But just know the common words that people may bring forth okay we are not saying well you should know all these you know 70 whatever two languages no but understand a good number of them where for example somebody wants to talk luchazi and you do not understand luchazi i'm sure that same luchazi man will be able to understand english you see? Or if he can't speak English, he will be able to speak uh, Nyanja or Bemba or, you know, there are some common languages mm. which people know. You can easily communicate using those languages. Thank you. Excellent. We have five minutes to go. We can uh, allow in one last call. Uh, as we conclude, 0978-383-141. I think let's look at bidding farewell as we wait for another call. Yes, bidding farewell. We were saying, if it's a guest, now they are leaving. They came in, we greeted them. 
Now they have done business with us. They want to go. We are saying thank them for giving us this business. Thank you. Then wish them a good journey if they are traveling. You can even help them with some luggage. You can carry their luggage, use, send somebody, your, your helper, to actually carry their luggage to wherever they are when, if they are going into a vehicle to carry those luggages to the vehicle. You also invite as they are going. You, you have been happy, you have, you have been happy with their coming to your shop, invite them to call again. Wonderful, mm. excellent. Now, finally, let's look at handling customer complaints quickly. It will be done by 10 o'clock. When a customer comes in to complain, we should not shut them up. We should listen to them without interrupting the customer or the guests, and we should give an appropriate answer. We must be tactful, but honest and prompt in dealing with the matter at hand or making consultations. Let us always apologize for the inconvenience that we have caused the customer instead of us telling them that they can go somewhere else if we are not happy with the service. And where customers or guests are difficult or are irritating, remember the customer is king. Your job is to maintain calmness and politeness. If you do, do that, chances are that, that that customer will you know, get back to their senses and they'll come back to that shop or to that business. And if an employee, if you are an employee of a particular business, you should avoid giving an impression that you could have done something about that situation, but your boss is a hindrance. Remember, you are the image of the company, so always put your colleagues in good light. So those are some of the tips on how we can handle customer complaints. As I conclude, let me mention that some countries like Britain are highly developed and one of the components of development is good public and customer care, public relations and customer care. We always say, I want to go to Dubai. Dubai is the new capital city of business. Let me share with you, my colleagues. Dubai is the number one tourism destination in the world today because of good customer care your business premise, always make sure that you give them a good customer experience. Let the experience be something that they will never forget. Let the experience bring them back to your business and let them give references to others so that you are going to have a lot of other new customers. Our job is to save our existing customers and also to ensure that we bring new customers on board. Therefore, it is very, very important for the sustenance of our businesses. Let us remember that the customer is the king. Whether you are in the grocery business, whether you are dealing in uh, warehousing, whether you are dealing in hardware, whether it is agriculture, whether it is manufacturing, whether it is transportation, whether you are in the business of education, whether you are providing saloon services, barbershop services, exempted 
from good customer care. Well, dear listeners, it was a nice journey being with you. Thank you so much for everyone that has called in. And